Alright, hello everyone, this is Kino from Endless Illusion Software, and today I'm showing off the new EIS Achievements plugin that has been revamped to use the new 1.5 plugin parameters. So, we're going to cover setting it up, unlocking achievements, and the different settings available to you in the new version of the plugin. By the way, the new version of the plugin is completely compatible with the old version in terms of the file. However, you'll be missing out on a lot of the new core features such as the script box, images, icon mask, categories, and more. So let's start with the plugin settings which have been completely changed. So as you can see, a lot of the old plugin parameters have been kept for compatibility reasons, but I'm gonna go through them briefly. The first thing is the achievement file name, which basically show, is the name of the file you use for your achievements. The system title, which basically shows the achievements title when you're in the achievement scene. You can also change the color of the, the, when the achievement title with numbers set by basically using your window skin numbers that you would use for text color. The next thing is we have masks, a special part of the system, which basically does not show you what the achievement is until you're ready to unlock it, which is pretty cool. The next thing you can also have is an icon mask, which basically has a default icon when the achievement isn't unlocked. And finally, we have a file update, which basically updates the achievement file over a certain time interval which is also another cool thing that we use to keep it from being too heavy on the processing power. Another cool thing, so, which is the new parameters, pop-up notifications, achievement categories, and achievement list. Achievement categories allows us to put our achievements into categories on the new achievement category scene. And the pop-up notifications will show you when a new achievement is unlocked on the map scene by showing you the title and that it was unlocked. The last thing, which is the most important one, is the achievement list. The achievement list parameter allows you to basically make as many achievements as you want for your game. And it has a lot of interesting and very useful parameters for each achievement. You have the title, the description, the title being whatever will show up on the achievement scene for the new achievement title, the description, which is the text that goes right below and tells you what the achievement is about. We also have the icon number, which is used when the achievement is unlocked, and the icon mask, which is used when the achievement isn't unlocked. This allows you to have unique masks for each achievement that you have. The next thing is the achievement image, which uses the new 1.5 plugin parameters, which allows you to select an image to be shown on the new achievement details window. So you can go in here and select one of these images, such as dark space, click OK, and now we'll have a new image that will show up on the achievement details window when we look at our unlocked achievement. The next thing is we can set the category and the mask type. The mask type is used when you want to decide what part of the achievement is masked. For example, you can just not show the title, not show the description, or both. It's up to you. The next thing is you can change the color of the actual title text and the description. The next thing we have are the unique masks for both the title and the description. And finally, we have the reward common event. The reward common event allows us to run a common event whenever an achievement is unlocked. And it only runs once to prevent the player from abusing the system. The default is zero, which pretty much prevents any, any common event from being run in the system. The next important and new parameter is the script box. The script box allows you to run any sort of script calls you want when the achievement is 
unlocked. So for example, we can set the value of game variable one and also set the value of the game switches to a true, game switch one to true. And finally, we have our achievement not linked. This is a special parameter that allows us to have achievements that when the game is running, on the next playthrough, the player would have the ability to unlock them again in case you wanted to have rewards that carry over and the achievement could be unlocked again for player progression or something along those lines. And that is a rundown of all of the special parameters available for achievements. One thing I'd like to add though is that you can also use text codes within the description box so you can put whatever text code you want and it will show up in your achievement description. But anyway, that's enough about parameters. Let's get into the game. So if we press play test and save our changes, one interesting thing you'll notice is that once you click play test, the game will start and you're basically allowed to do whatever you want from there because a new achievement file is generated once you click start. So a couple cool things is we have a couple of events set up here which you can see in the actual game but here we are we have the EIS unlock achievement which is the script call version and we also have the plugin command version which will unlock achievement 2. We unlock all achievements by IDs. The rest of these are all basically to show off some of the other script calls such as going to the new achievement scene in various ways. And also to check out what the value of game variable 1 is once we actually unlock specific achievements. So let's try out some of the script calls in game right now. So first, we're going to try the ID for number one. As you can see, it pops up with a notification window, which closes after a certain amount of time, and the message that went along with the common event. And if we go over to this guy, we can check that the first achievement has been unlocked. And if we go to the details view by clicking on it, we can actually see the icon, the achievement title, and then the achievement text, so the description. And then we can see the category and whether it's complete or not. Interesting thing to note is that because we're using draw, since we're incorporating text codes, you will have to put manual line breaks in order to have the right formatting that you want. And you can also see the image off to the right so you can have whatever kind of image you want to make your details view look a bit more fancy. All right, so the next thing we can do is unlock achievement two, which is a bit different from number one. So if we click here, we can go over here and click on this guy and he will show us the second achievement, which is music. And as you can see, music is a bit different from the first one. It uses, uh, again, text codes, just like how they would work in the regular game engine, and shows us music with the harp icon and blue text. All right, now we can still do a bit more here. So let's go and look at categories. Categories is a bit more interesting. So the categories adds a new category window, which you can click on general and show you whatever's in the general category. And you can click out and go to music and it'll show you whatever's in the music category, which allows you to allow, let your players kind of have some sort of organization when they want to go through every achievement. The next thing is, we also have one more thing. Since we're using script calls with a new script box, we can check the value of these variables once we execute our achievement or run our achievement. And as you can see, it just works right out of the box. 
Now, I hope this explanation was helpful to you all, and this example project will also be available on the new EIS Achievements page for the plugin. And if you have any more questions, you can look at the help file or contact me. With that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a wonderful night.